Hi, I'm Tim Walter and welcome to this video manual for eMagic's Notator. We hope to be able to cover most of the applications of the program, but the more complex ones may be covered in a future update to come soon. Watch this space. Please don't sit and watch the whole video from start to finish as you'll probably end up brain dead and you won't take in very much anyway. The aim of the video is to try and explain visually how to use the program. It won't replace your current eMagic manual. So what I suggest you do is use both in combination to become a complete expert. Watch a few tutorials at a time and then practice those moves. Don't go on until you've mastered the things we've done in those tutorials. In addition, I'd get a pen and paper handy to jot down some of the short key cuts I'm going to give you. These will really help you zap around the program and make it easier to use. The Atari computer I'm using is a 4 meg STE with SM144 monitor and built-in 50 meg hard drive. The program, however, will quite happily run on a 1040, the Atari 1040 1 megabyte machine, but bear in mind if you're using fonts, you probably need a little bit more memory, maybe 2 megabyte of memory, to help you work those. I'm just using the bigger computer today to enable me to run things a little bit faster and save things much quicker with the hard drive facility. We're going to be working in my studio for this video, so I hope to be able to show you some of the applications interfacing this program to multi-track tape recorders, video machines, and also various sound modules. I'm going to be using the Alesis SR16 drum machine, Proteus sound module, and the Korg M1 sound module. Don't worry if you haven't got all of this gear. All you need is a basic Atari computer, the 1040, and a multi-timbral sound source. Let's talk a little bit about the gear we're going to be using. The 1040 computer. Looks a bit like this. Every home should have one. Important things to notice on this. The dongle port there. Make sure your dongle is firmly inserted into that. The dongle, incidentally, a bit there, goes into there, pushed in firmly. Your MIDI port's there, MIDI in and MIDI out. They're all labelled. Everything's labelled, in fact, on the computer. Your mains, the on and off switch, the other end, the disk drive, floppy disk drive, and the other thing underneath there, the mouse port. If you've got more than one multi-timbral sound source, you may want to have more than 16 MIDI channels, provided straight away with the Atari are 16 MIDI channels, A1 to 16. Now, if, if you've got a Proteus sound module, for example, uh, you'll need another 16 MIDI channels to access those sounds. This is where you could perhaps use export, plugged into the back of the computer, which would give you B1 to 16. You connect the B output on export to your Proteus sound module. Then simply by selecting on the track here, you choose MIDI channel A, 1 to 16, or B, 1 to 16. This is export. It expands your MIDI system. It enables you to have B, 1 to 16, C, 1 to 16, and D, 1 to 16. Extra MIDI channels. Very handy. So once you've set up all of the sounds on your individual sources, all you've got to do then is select the track on the computer and select the correct MIDI channel to talk to that instrument. So, printers. Obviously, there's loads of these on the market. It's difficult to make a decision. There's basically three to choose from. A 9-pin printer, a 24-pin printer, or a laser star printer. For Notator, I'd probably recommend a 24-pin printer for good score printout. Once you're all set up, there's absolutely no order for switching things on. But two things to check. Check that the program disk is in the drive, and check that the dongle's in. Then just switch on.